Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, October 31st, 2017 edition of the Sands and its Storms and its Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Stockheim, Germany. Let's start with a couple of HTTPS related topics and now first of all Google announced that they may drop support for public key pinning in Google Chrome. Public key pinning has been around for a couple years now I believe but hasn't really taken off for a number of reasons. First of all it's not quite straightforward to actually enable it and secondly there is a pretty real denial of service possibility if you are enabling it or worse if an attacker is enabling it for you. Now just as a quick reminder with public key pinning your web server will return a special header. This header will contain hashes for all keys that are valid for your particular hostname or domain. Now the problem of course comes up if you ever need to rotate your key. Now public key pinning the standard actually requires that you have at least two keys listed here but uh, if you don't do it right if you rotate key and you make a key life that's not in the list then of course people will no longer be able to connect to your site. Now of course the problem that public key pinning tries to address is very real in that it does prevent someone from going to a certificate authority tricking or coercing that certificate authority in giving them a valid key for your domain. Now what Google says is well there are actually other ways that don't have all the negative side effects uh, to accomplish the same thing. One thing well a certificate transparency. If browsers will only trust a set of authorities that do publish certificate transparency lists then of course such a bad certificate would be spotted by the legitimate owner of that domain. Of course uh, that assumes that domain owners care enough to subscribe to these type of alerts. It's typically free, it's not that hard to subscribe to the alert and what it really comes down in the end is that public key pinning really hasn't taken off. There are only few sites that use it so probably chances are that more people will use the certificate transparency alerts and maybe other methods like these CAA DNS records that were recently made mandatory for set of authorities. So, so what it comes down to is if nobody uses public key pinning because of the potential denial of service effects, then really there is no need to support it in browsers in particular as there are other methods that people may actually use. Just on a personal note here for our isc.sans.edu site we do support public key pinning for the shield.org we don't in part because we use let's encrypt for the certificates for the shield.org and its frequent rotations. I haven't found a good way to really make that work with public key pinning so that's why we don't do it. And the second story I have actually just speaks to this particular problem of certificate authorities probably going rogue. In Mozilla an effort was started to actually remove the trust for a Dutch certificate authority. Now uh, this certificate authority hasn't gone rogue yet, hasn't done anything wrong up to this point but it is operated by the Dutch government and next year a new law will go into effect in the Netherlands that uh, will actually open up the possibility of using bad SSL keys in order to intercept traffic. Now realistically speaking there are a number of countries that have this same possibility and either do have the legal framework or are highly suspected of doing so without the legal framework. So not really clear why this Dutch certificate authority was really pointed out. This may really be more a political move to sort of draw attention to the fact that the new Dutch law that's going to go in effect next year 
does allow for just that possibility that Dutch authorities will use this government-owned certificate authority in order to issue fake certificates. And well, crypto coin miners are just not going away. The latest story here comes from Trend Micro. Trend Micro found a number of applications that you can download via the Google Play Store that are including CoinHive's uh, crypto coin miner. Well, it turns out that in this particular case, it sort of slipped past Google's controls because that crypto mining code is used later after the application is loaded into the user's device. Just like so often with Android Malware, there are legitimate looking applications that are being copied and this CoinHive crypto coin miner is added as an additional feature to these otherwise valid applications. And well, that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.